My attitude going into commercial contracts is every job sucks. It's my job to decide how bad it sucks. Welcome back to the channel. And today I thought I'd tackle a subject that I've had several people ask me about, and that is I'm doing residential fill in the blank, and I'd like to move to commercial. What are some of the things that I need to worry about? Before I get into all that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing down below and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload new content. And if you like what we're doing or have a question or have a topic that you'd like addressed in a future episode, drop us a comment down below and let us know what you think. Without further ado, let's get into it. So one of the questions I get more often than any other question is I'm a residential and I'm going to talk fencing because that's what the industry I'm in. I'm a residential fence contractor and I see all these people talking about commercial fencing and I'm thinking about getting into commercial fencing. The first thing to consider if you're thinking about making the jump from residential to commercial is are you ready for that? The margins can be higher. But along with those margins, so can the requirements and the paperwork requirements and some of the administrative costs. So if you don't have a team behind you to handle all that stuff, you may not be the right time to jump into all that. General contractors are going to be very unforgiving when it comes time to follow the rules of the contract and when they need paperwork from you. Things like submittals are gonna become an issue where you can't just hand them a simple piece of paper and say, hey, we're gonna come build you a privacy fence. They're gonna want actual drawings from you showing exactly how the fence is gonna be built. Even though that they've already provided you drawings, they basically want you to regurgitate all that, put it on a sheet with your name on it and say, yes, I understand all of the project specifications and we're gonna get it installed the correct way. So there's a lot more that goes into managing a commercial project. One of the other things to think about is, do I have the kind of money that it's gonna to take to run commercial projects? The pay period from the time you start the job till the time you get your first paycheck typically can run as much as 90 days. That is, you can show up on day one with your materials, not be able to submit a pay application for 25 to 30 days. And then it's, we'll say 45 days at the earliest and 60 days probably uh, somewhere in there by the time you finally receive your checks. So that can leave you without any income for about 90 days. And if you don't have a way to fund your company, during that lack of payment and until you build that cash flow cycle, then that can really hurt. You'll have vendors that want to get paid and you'll have team members that need to be paid. And the whole time, all you're doing is sending money out the door and there's none coming in. So unlike residential where you're constantly collecting deposits and finishing new jobs, these jobs are going to be much larger and require much more capital to be invested before you actually see a return on that capital come back. So that can hurt a lot of people. Another area that people struggle with is the retention. On construction projects, it is very common for retention to be held and that is typically 10%. So if you're shooting for a 10% profit margin on that project, that may be your entire profit for the job. Now, if you lost money, that's even money that you maybe need to pay vendors or pay your team members. Waiting to get that money can hurt and that can take sometimes up to a year. Uh, usually it happens within 45 to 90 days of the project closeout. So if you do your work at the very front of the project, you could be waiting for two or three years before you ever see any of that money. It really just depends on when the project closeout happens to when you receive your attention check. So that could be a large sum of money that's set out there that you've actually earned and can't receive. Let's talk about the risk. The risk is another thing people don't understand. If you go from doing small residential projects that maybe range $10,000 a piece, now all of a sudden you're getting into commercial projects that can be $50,000, $100,000, all the way up to a couple million dollars. The bigger those projects are, the more your capital costs, but also the more risk. And I had a conversation with another person today, and we always look at that risk when we're bidding these big projects. It's really good to think about the kind of risk that you're getting into when you're considering a large project. Sometimes people get lost in the fact that, oh, wow, that's a huge project. That's the biggest one I've ever got. Everything's gonna work out great and I'll make all this money. 
and they forget to weigh the risk. Sometimes there's a lot of variables. There's a lot, a lot of unknowns. If you're working for a general contractor that's notoriously difficult to work for, uh, they could string you out even longer. Um, so you might take even longer than 60 days to get paid. Um, these are all risks. And it's best to remember the same thing that happens in poker. And they say you can't lose what you don't put in the middle. The same is true for construction. I can't lose what I don't get involved in. I'm not always worried about whether or not I'm the cheapest because sometimes if a project's too risky, I'd rather go in high and lose the job than go in low and really aggressive, get the job and find out that I wish I hadn't got it. So try not to risk chips that you're not willing to lose. Another thing that I'll say, I hear a lot of people say, I want to get into it because the margins are higher, but I just don't know what I'm doing. Dip your toe in the water before you really get into it. Don't go out there and if you're doing $10,000 yard jobs as a routine, don't go out there and look for a $300,000 project. That's not gonna be the place to start. Work your way up. And as you work your way up, you'll get more and more familiar with what's required. Start yourself with maybe a $50,000 project, something that's well within your comfort zone and if you lose, it's not gonna be the end of your company. My attitude going into commercial contracts is every job sucks, it's my job to decide how bad it sucks. There's no good job. There's no perfect job. Those are a myth. They don't happen. So when I'm trying to figure out how bad that job is going to suck, it's going to depend on how much I pad it to make sure that all of my bases are covered. If the plans are horrible, then I'm going to add some money because that means that the engineer or the architect and I are not on the same page. And I don't want to get into one of those situations where it's gotcha and the specification spelled out everything. And now, I need to put both a top and a bottom rail on and the drawings or the detail sheet only showed a top rail, but the specs said top and bottom. So they're holding my feet to the fire and I've got to fight them on it. So the worse the plans are and the more confusion there are in the plans and the specifications, the higher my price is going to be to account for that because we're just not willing to take that risk that I'm going to have to provide some very expensive part of the fence that I didn't bid for. So if you go into it, the attitude that every job sucks, and it's your job to figure out how bad it sucks, then you'll be a lot safer. So be conservative when you get started in this. What I find a lot is, is that people are usually good at one thing or the other, but not both. So I see a lot of people that are great at residential and I see people that are great at commercial, but I don't often see people that are great at both. Now that's not to say those people don't exist out there, but it takes two different management styles. And another thing that it, we find this is that overheads seem to be different between one or other In residential work. We see people that are much quicker and they're much leaner. They're kind of grinding out their profits where in commercial, it's maybe just a touch fatter. The margins can be a little bit higher, but also there again, so can the risks. It also takes a lot more manpower to staff some of these projects when they start getting into the several hundred thousand dollars. So, there's those things to think about. And that's another thing you need to consider is do I have the manpower and the equipment to do some of these projects? Because you may only have a certain amount of time before you run into things like liquidated damages and that can cost you. So if your company is not large enough to handle the staffing requirements, as well as take care of your other requirements, then it may not be the right time to get in a commercial. What we find a lot of times is we'll bid jobs thinking that they're going to happen at two completely separate times. And then inevitably what happens is, is everything ends up being needing to be done at the same time. The prime time for that is coming up. That's going to be August from August until December is when everything comes due because the first thing everybody's trying to do is get everything done before the end of summer. And the next thing they're trying to do is get it all done before it freezes so hard that they can't get anything done. So in our industry, what we see is a huge rush from August, uh, basically the time right before school starts. Schools are putting out a lot of projects, trying to get their stuff done. And then that carries all the way through December. So if you're not ready to staff all those projects, then it may not be the right thing for you to do because you there again are going to have to maybe hire more people when you didn't plan on hiring more people. And that can make controlled growth much more difficult. And that's something we'll talk about in a future video is how do I control that growth in something that can be very sporadic. If you're going to go from doing residential projects to commercial projects, another thing that can be a huge factor is insurance. The insurance requirements on commercial projects are going to be much higher than they are on residential. Residential customers are not going to require that you carry a certain amount of liability. On commercial projects, they are, and that can run upwards of $10 million per incident. 
It's a lot different than if you're carrying a half a million dollar project to do Mrs. Johnson's backyard. The insurance requirements are completely different and that can cost you a lot of money, especially if you don't put that into your bid. Right along with insurance can be bonding. You can go out and bid these great big huge jobs, but if the general contractor says, hey, you know what, we're ready to use you and we need to know, uh, we're gonna need you to bond that, are you ready to bond the project? And for those of you that don't understand what a bond is, a bond is insurance that you will perform on the project. And the younger your company is, or the more inexperienced your company is in this realm, the higher likelihood that you'll be required to put up a bond. If you, for some reason, fail to complete the project, the bonding company will send somebody in there to finish the project up for you in your place, and then they'll come after you and look for money from you for whatever difference it costs uh, them to get that project finished after you left. So be ready to provide bonds. And the younger you are and the less, less experienced you are, the more your bonding rate is going to be, the higher your bonding rate will be, meaning that the bonding company doesn't have a whole lot of faith in you. So they aren't going to probably let you go out and bid a $2 million fence job or any kind of $2 million job if all you've been doing is $10,000 projects. So they're going to want to see what type of projects you've been working on, how big are those projects, and they're going to want to see you work your way up before they start letting you bid bigger and bigger things and get bonded for those. So in the early years, you're going to struggle with that a little bit. So be ready for that hurdle. And in general, it's just different dealing with general contractors versus homeowners. Our company is very specifically geared towards commercial work. That is, doesn't mean that we do residential, but we're not as good at the residential side as if we were a uh, commercial only. If it were up to me and we could make it in Wyoming and only do commercial work, that is what our company would do solely without any residential. But the residential is nice for cash flow and um, times when there's no work in between large commercial projects and just keeps things moving slowly in a less populous state. So that is important to our company for its growth. But if we could make it solely on commercial, that is probably all we would do. Homeowners are not bound by any set of specifications and when we deal with general contractors, I tend to prefer that more because there is a written contract, there's written specifications. We can argue about very little stuff, uh, not to say that arguments don't come up, but it's just more black and white and there are remedies for almost every situation in the contract documents or the specifications. So I tend to prefer that more. I can get a little bit more heated with contractors and still come out friends than I can with Mrs. Johnson. Um, so my personality style tends to like that a little bit more. Uh, it just works for me. But I know a lot of other people that do really good at residential. So think about what you really want. If you don't want to put all that at risk and you're really happy doing residential, then probably stay in the residential sphere. Don't worry about the grass being greener on the other side because if you're good at what you do, it doesn't really matter whether or not you're commercial or residential. Um, stick to what you like. The other thing you're going to need to do Lastly, is you're going to need to get really good at reading contracts and you're going to need to get really good at reading plans and specifications. If you're at all uncomfortable with that, stay out of commercial because that is all that is. If you look at a set of blueprints and have no idea what side's up, what side's down, and it all looks upside down and like it's written, written in German, then definitely don't get into commercial because it will only get worse. And a lot of times there's discrepancies that make it even more difficult. So uh, can be very unforgiving very unforgiving. But with residential customers these days, that can get pretty unforgiving too. And they can be relentless. So until next time, stay successful and you have a good dang day.